Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make this three drawer work table or desk. And this is for my own doll's house kitchen. And if you've been following my doll's house diary series, you'll know that I've made a bench for the kitchen. But I also had an idea of putting a desk with a chair in that area next to the chimney breast. So this is the desk and I just want to compare the two and see which I prefer. There'll also be a chair tutorial coming up soon to go with this desk. And I think this could also be used as a console table in an entrance hall or something like that. You'll find the cutting list for this project in the description box below. And coming up next is a list of all the tools and materials you'll need and then we'll get started. to begin by attaching the mouldings to the back piece and the side pieces. So I've got here some glue which I've dispensed onto a piece of card and a cocktail stick which I'm going to apply it with. I've got here a piece of spare um, strip wood which I'm going to use to make sure the mouldings are flush along the top and bottom edges of the wood. And I've also got here my clothes pegs or clothes pins which I'm going to use to secure the pieces together. So begin by applying glue along the back edge of the first moulding and I always just have a look and check which is the nicest side and then I have that side facing forwards and that's a good habit to get into. So just lay that across the top of the piece. Bring in your piece of strip wood and then press both pieces against it that will make sure you've got a nice flush edge. Just slide that over a bit. You've always got time to manoeuvre before the glue begins to take if you need to. And then I've got a spare cocktail stick here to remove the excess glue. Same with the remaining moulding. Find my nicest side. the piece of strip wood and again remove any excess glue. And be careful when you do that that you're not knocking the moulding out of place. And then you can bring in your clothes pegs and secure the mouldings. And it's important to do this because as the glue begins to dry the moulding will try and curl upwards I'm just going to put a couple in the middle as well. You've probably heard me say it before, but always sort of secure things with as many clamps or clothes pegs as you can. And that piece can then be left to dry. And then you can do the same thing again with your side pieces. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the clothes pegs and then just sand along each edge of each piece to make sure you've got nice flush edges and there's no overhanging mouldings. So have the sandpaper flat on your work surface and sweep the piece along the sandpaper in one direction. Don't go back and forth or, or you'll round off the edges. And I've already done the other pieces. And now take your leg pieces and we're going to make a pencil mark six millimetres or a quarter of an inch from the bottom of each leg. So just do a little mark like that, six millimetres or a quarter of an inch. And this is where we're going to place our supports. Like that. 
and then we're going to attach a leg to each side of each side piece like so and then your support will sit just above those little pencil lines so apply glue to each side of each side piece dot of glue on each end of the support. So attach the side piece so it's sitting at the top of the leg. The top of each piece should be flush. And then attach the support so it's sitting just above that pencil line. Like that. And then bring in the remaining leg again so you've got a nice flush edge there and that the support is just above the pencil line. Squeeze the pieces together and you can bring in that spare piece of strip again just to make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top there. Press everything up against it and then again you can bring in another piece and push it all together like that. That'll make sure that everything is sitting flat and the legs don't try to turn inwards. Then slide that piece along your work surface rather than picking it up because it might just fall apart. And that can be left to dry. And then you can do the same with the remaining side. We're now going to mark up the back, top and bottom pieces for placement of the draw divide. So we'll start with the back piece. And we're going to make pencil marks 27.5 millimetres, and that's 1 and 5 sixty-fourths of an inch from each end. So 27.5 millimetres, 1 and 5 sixty-fourths of an inch from each end. And it doesn't divide exactly between three or by three so the central draw will be a tiny fraction of a millimeter wider but you won't be able to notice that with the naked eye once they're made like that and we're going to do that same thing again on each of the top and bottom pieces so again 27.5 millimeters from each end one and five sixty fourths of an inch Doing your little pencil marks and then turn and join those up. And then on this one, join those up and then take the pencil mark onto the front and back edge of each piece. And that will just help when we're positioning the divides and looking from the front. Right there. Same with the bottom piece as well. And I wanted to do three drawers on this one just because two drawers would have been wide, very wide. So in real life you'd have had a couple of drawers that were what, almost sort of two feet wide. So that's why I've done the three. onto the front and back edge again. And we do the front and back edge just because at this, for this stage we don't know which way round we're going to be placing it. So, so we're going to start by attaching the back piece to the back leg of one of the side pieces and it will line up with that back leg with the moulding on. It's the same thickness now as the leg so you're just attaching it as far back as you can go so you've got a nice flush edge along the back there. So apply glue along the side of the back piece. Glue that into place. Don't forget to go around the back 
and remove the excess glue from there as well. And it's sort of made it quite heavy now so it's wanting to tip over. And bring in your top piece and that's going to go on the inside edge of those pieces. So apply glue to one short and one long edge. I've noticed I've sort of cut at a bit of an angle there so I'm just going to sand that off. Always make sure you've got nice straight edges. And you want it so your pencil lines are on the inside. And they'll line up with those on the back. So get your side piece positioned first. And get it positioned along the side there first. Nice flush edge. Press it into place and then bring that back piece in to meet it. And that will then square the whole thing off. Press it all together. Turn the piece onto the top like this and we're now going to attach those draw divides and they're each going to sit on the inside of those lines that we've done. So begin by applying glue to one short and one long edge. I'm just attaching that on the inside of that line, so to the left hand side of it as I'm looking at it. Just have a quick peep and make sure it's to the left hand side of that little line we did on the front edge there, which it is. And then the same with the remaining one and this will go to the right hand side of the line as we're looking at it. Again apply glue along a short and a long edge. quick peep from the front. Need to go over a tiny bit. Press it into place. Now going to attach the bottom piece. So apply glue first along the tops of those or bottoms of those draw divides. to the long and short edge of the bottom piece. And you want to sit that on there and push it into that corner as well. Make sure you're pushing it right into that corner. So you should have a nice flush line here and along that back as well. And if you find it sticking up a little bit then you might find that your draw divides are just a little bit too tall. So if your glue is still tacky you can just pull those out and sand a little bit off. And then you can just carefully position those divides so they're sitting in the right place against your little pencil line. I can see there that one looks a little bit wonky. So just pull it into position. Press the bottom down against them. Have a look from the front as well just to make sure they're at the right angle and I can see that one isn't. And it's trying to sort of spring over to the right as well. So put it in the right place and then hold on to it. The same with that one. Trying to get at that before the glue dries too much. That looks right now. So lay that down on its side. Bring in your long support. Back support, I think I called it in the cutting list. 
and you want to attach that so it's level with that side support there. Press it down. Make sure it's just sitting on the back leg and not actually onto the support. And then apply glue to the exposed side edges. A little dot of glue on the long support there, back support. And then we can attach the remaining side piece. So get your top positioned first so that your nice, nice flush edge along the top there and along the back. You should have a flush edge where that bottom piece is as well. Just push it up if you need to. Flush as well along that front. And then you can actually turn it over like that and position that back support again so it's level with the side one. And get it level and then press it down from the top. Be gentle with it as you might find that it all sort of pings apart. And I'm just going to hold on to that for 30 seconds whilst the glue begins to take and then I can grab some masking tape and hold it all together. I want to get a piece right over that side like that. Put it down onto the top first. Then just push it between there. And then I want to get a piece across the back to hold that support in place. I'm going to stand it up just because I don't want it collapsing. Be gentle as you're doing this. Because we're using the three mil, it's a little bit of a... I don't like to use the word flimsy, but more delicate piece. Press it all into place and then again that piece can be left to dry. I'll stand it up that way actually. If you follow my tutorials you'll know that I always advise to build the main unit first before cutting the pieces needed for the drawers and that's just because slight misplacement of the divides or any of the pieces will affect the size of the drawer opening. So construct the piece, measure the opening and you'll need the width, the height and the depth and then deduct about half a millimetre if that from each of those measurements just to make sure the drawer will open and close smoothly. And then once you've cut your pieces begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece on your work surface and attach the side pieces so you've got a nice flush edge along the front and back. Press them into place. I find it helps if you use a couple of pieces of strip wood just to push those into place as well and that will help keep them square. And then just leave that piece to dry off for a moment before attaching the front and back. So once that piece has dried off for a little while, and I just left mine for the time it took to attach the sides to the other pieces, apply glue to the front and back edges. Pop that back down and then you can attach the front and back pieces. Make sure you've got a nice flush edge along each side. carefully just squeeze that all together. Once again that piece can be left to dry off. Whilst the drawers are drying I want to prepare the top piece for wood dye and I just want to round off each side and one long edge. So to do that have your sandpaper flat on your work surface, 
hold the piece at an angle and sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position. I know you just want to gently round it off, so just do that a few times. Same on the other side. And then along one of those long edges. And then turn your piece over and do the same on the underside. Like that. And then I just like to finish that off in my hand with a piece of fine grade sandpaper. So again, just sweep the sandpaper along at an angle and go on to the underside as well. Same at each end. And it's really just to take off those sort of sharp edges and give it a more finished look. And then I also like to just round that corner off a little bit so you haven't got a really sharp point there. Like that. And then choose your best side and prepare it for wood dye by sanding all over in small circular motions. And then use a nice soft brush to remove the sanding dust. Once this piece is attached, you will be able to see the underside of the piece just around the edge, so you'll need to apply wood dye or varnish to the underside as well. So I like to use masking tape to create a little handle. So just make a little loop on the back like that. Press it down. And then we'll just use another couple of pieces to hold that in place. And this way you won't get wood dye on your fingers. You can hold it while you're applying the wood dye or varnish to the back and then you've got a little prop to stand it up to leave it to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, try the drawers into the openings and if you need to do any sanding then just sand a little bit at a time, try it again and then sand a little bit more if necessary. But you don't want to sand too much off in one go as you will have gapping. And for the handles I'm using these 2.5mm draw knobs. So to fit the draw knob bring in your smaller rule and you just want to begin by making a pencil mark in the centre of the draw. That, just a nice light mark like that and then turn it around and do a little pencil dot in the centre of the shorter edge. There like that and then you can erase the pencil line and your dot will stay there. And then I've got a 1.6mm bit in this mini drill. So just put that straight over your pencil dot, support the drawer with your finger and then just drill down slowly into the drawer. Keeping the drill nice and straight. Like that. And then I just jiggle it a little bit before I take that out. And then you can just try the draw knob in to make sure that it fits. If it's a little bit tight, just bring in a cocktail stick and just make that hole a little bit bigger. It's just because these aren't the stems on these aren't quite two millimeters, which is the next drill bit up that I've got. But if you've got a drill bit that's exactly the sort of width of the stem, then obviously use that. Make sure it sits flush against the front of the drawer, and then however tight that is, I always like to use just a little tiny bit of glue as well, just to make sure. Just put that around the inside of the hole. And then pop the drawer knob into place like that. You might have a little bit of an overhang on the inside, which you can just gently sand away once the glue has dried. Do that with the remaining drawers. So I've applied the first coat of paint to the table and the drawers, and they're drying over there on that plastic tray. And I'm now going to apply the wood dye to the top. So I've given this a really good shake and that's important because otherwise the sediment will sit at the bottom and you won't get the true colour. Get 
called them a little tab and I want to go around the outside of the underneath first and this wood dye is so easy to apply really quick and easy I always used to use varnish like wood varnish but it takes such a long time to apply and to dry and you find that you can get lines in it but this wood dye is far more forgiving so as with the other pieces in my kitchen I want to do two coats of this light oak and then I do a coat of dark oak over the top and wipe it off immediately but I do just like to have some kitchen towel handy and just dab off as I've done it sort of thing it's dry to the touch almost straight away but it will obviously take a few hours to dry completely once it's soaked into the wood so I'll just pop that on there as well I've given the table and the drawers two coats of paint and I sanded lightly after each coat had dried and I've also completed the top piece that's had two coats of light oak and one coat of dark oak so that now matches the other pieces in my kitchen and I'm now going to attach the top so just put a little bit of glue on the top there and that's too much and my the top of my glue has split well actually I split it it got bunged up and I sort of cut at it to get the glue out so it's not pouring very nicely so I'll just take a little bit of that off there so I use a spreader or a cocktail stick to spread that out make sure you get it right along the edges of the top and then you want the straight edge at the back of the table so just use your fingers there to make sure that that's flush with the back of the table there and then just pick it up and check that you've got an even amount hanging over at each edge and you've got a little bit of time just to move that along if not I just want to little, go that way a little tiny bit and then hold on to that whilst you remove any excess glue I'm just going to grab a bit of masking tape and this is a low tack masking tape and I'm just going to put a bit right over the top like that pull it nice and firmly and this shouldn't pull up any of the wood dye but if it does you can just touch that in And then I'm going to use clamps as well in each of those drawer openings. Again, it's important to do this, otherwise the, as the glue dries, the top will try and lift upwards and you'll always have that gap then along the front. So make sure you do clamp as well. Let's see if I can get another two. In that central opening like that in fact I think I might just put a little bit of tape over the back or I may even actually get another clamp Just see if I can get a clamp on there. I think they're wide enough. Yep. Yeah. When you use clamps, always make sure that they're on the solid part of the wood. So don't put it too far forward. I'm putting it on the actual sort of back piece there, which is quite firm. Don't put it on the bottom piece of wood there. couple more in there 
and make sure as well that they are actually um, on there firmly before you let go. Sometimes they can ping off and I've had them hit me in the face before. Like that. Finally, I just want to add a coat of clear wax and this is just a clear shoe polish and I just apply it with piece of kitchen towel and just to the top just to the wood dyed piece of wood in small circular motions and it really does bring out the colour more it gives a nice rich colour I'm just sort of done half there and I don't know if you can catch that on camera but it even brings out more of the grain in the wood even on this sort of um, soft wood And this step is optional, you might just want to leave it with a sort of matte finish. And be careful not to get it onto the painted part of the unit. Because it does actually stain the paint and you'll have to paint over it to remove it. So work it into the wood like that. And then take a clean, dry piece of the cloth and just go over the top and that just buffs it off. And there is the completed piece. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button now as there's lots more tutorials to come. If you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like my books. I've published five of them so far and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. Do also pop over and have a look in my Etsy shop where you'll find loads of tools and accessories and miniatures. The links are in the description below. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.